Now let's run the game. There it is. Oh, oh, I'm minimizing the window. That's not what I meant to do. It is Umineko Friday night from the makers of Umineko Saturday night. And we have more of episode three to uh, to digest. Uh, ba 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 Oh, Kyrie. Is it is it so much to ask? To have both Kyrie and Eva make it through the first round of killings this episode. Is that too much to ask for me? Can I just can I just this is this is the wish. This is the wish that I'm putting out into the universe on this this Friday night. The first stream of June? My birth month? So I feel like I get a birthday wish, and I'm going to put into the universe that for episode three both Kyrie and Eva make it through the first round of killings. It's not much. I'm not asking for much. I'm not asking for a miracle here. I'm just asking for them not to die. Seems in all that Ryokishi participated as scenario writer is coming to Steam. Oh. Loopers. Oh. Interesting. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. I'm going to type that into my Steam so that I can remember to look at that after. Yeah, just got that coming soon. Interesting. What is kinetic novel? Oh, this is I, I can't I can't be reading the store entry right now. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the look. I'm looking at the colors. I'm looking at the okay. I just need to put this away. I need to look this way. No, see, I know it. I was reading the store page. The store page says what is a kinetic novel. The store page itself was being like, hey, <laughs> what is a kinetic novel? That's why I was saying I need to stop reading a store page. All right. Let's see. Um, I got water. Closing the water. All right. Uh, Banquet of the Golden Witch, uh, episode three. Let's go, Kyrie. I'll just audio once we get into it. Wait, there's a train wreck coming? Oh, it's a little louder than I want it to be. That is just a little louder. It's also loud in my ears, particularly. Because I forgot to turn it down. I have so many... I have so many... I mean, I do it to myself. I have so many levels of audio. I have out. I have the. I have levels in my own head. I've got levels going out. I got levels of the game. I got levels... There's le levels to this. Yeah, that's true. Every episode has been a train wreck in its own special way. Um, Kyrie says, "Oh, what do we? What, let's actually, yeah, let's scroll back a little bit. Let's just see." All right, they talked about the the riddle. Oh, I remember what happened last. There was the whole um, Eva, young Eva, young Eva, current Eva, Eva doing her thing, Eva being Eva. That's all this. I remember all this. I don't need to do this. I don't need to read it. I, I got this. Just, just seagulls in my head right now. Uh, Eva Nissan. It looks like we're about to arrive. Let me turn it. Now I'm gonna just boot the smallest adjustment. There we go. When Kyrie shook her shoulders, Eva jumped and awoke from her doze. 
Uh oh, Eva and uh, excuse me, Kyrie. Um, first two being shown on the screen tonight. It's a sign they're gonna live. They're gonna live. They're gonna live, everyone. Ah. I'm sorry. I was half asleep. Sorry to scare you. And Eva, you were out cold. Did you get up early this morning? Maybe. I'll let you all see something embarrassing. I'm sorry. Well, I'd say it's pretty impressive you're relaxed enough to sleep. <laughs> Battler kept yelling, we're gonna fall, we're gonna drown. Can't get bored with this guy around. Shut up. All humans have at least one thing they're weak against. Battler and Jessica came in messing around. Rudolph also made a face as if asking, Are you okay? Get a hold of yourself. Okay, I, I feel like I've noticed this in the last part of this street of the series. Is it just me or is this Rudolph just a lot more quieter in the last two parts? Uh, whatever. When you see Dad and the rest, all that sleepiness will go right out the window. Let's all give it our best, okay? Like, I can see the audio levels. I can see the audio levels. Rudolph here is gaslighting me. It, it, he's, <laughs> he's talking quieter than everyone else. So, Maybe it's just in my head. Uh, that's right. We have to keep it together, especially this year. That's it. Like he's... No, it's not <laughs> the seagulls. I'm saying <laughs> the seagulls are drowning him out. No, he's just... I don't remember Rudolph being this, this quiet. Now this line's great. Let's all tighten our assholes and go. Rudolph said these strict words in a small voice that only Eva could hear. Oh, maybe that's why he's being, he's, he's being understated. But it was happening in the last episode too, I thought I remember. It was, unless I'm just making things up now. I thought I remember there was some Rudolph section and he was being quiet. Or am I thinking of Kraus maybe? Was Kraus, was he, Rudolph even in the last episode? Maybe I, man, maybe I'm, maybe I am just insane. Failure would not be tolerated in this year's family conference. All of their companies were hanging in the balance. Oh yeah, Rudolph was. Yeah, Rudolph and Hideyoshi were together. Yeah. Oh, and that would remember because I was when I was editing to get the video up ready for. I think publish tomorrow. Saturday. Yeah. I was watching back the Hideyoshi and Rudolph scene for something. Um, even Rudolph's face looked a little tense. Eva's expression probably looked tense as well. Mom, I have our luggage. Let's go up onto the deck. Thank you. You really are considerate, George. Why? Excuse me. Why are you thanking me so suddenly? <laughs> Almost had a cough drop just fall out of my mouth as I was saying that line. Oh, uh, it's not like you, mother. Eva! Georgie! Reason number 5727 I don't stream with face cam. Eva! George! We're there! Grab our luggage. Uh. We're there! We're there! Giggle! Hey, Maria! Stop running or you'll trip! See, Maria was already getting excited. 
Uh, she ran in circles around Hideyoshi, escaping from Rosa, who was trying to catch her. Dots. What is it, mother? Do you feel sick? George! George! Take our luggage and go on ahead. Your mother is probably feeling anemic, so I'll lend her a hand. So. Really? Okay, I'll head out first. Something odd in Eva's expression told Hideyoshi that it hadn't been a pleasant awakening, so he made George go on ahead. Rudolph's family and Rosa's family also went up onto the deck, leaving only Eva and Hideyoshi inside the boat. Eva had a vague expression on her face, as though she still hadn't been able to escape from her daydream. Man, she is shaken up. What's wrong? Why the meek face? I wonder if I'm using George as a tool for my own revenge. Uh, something tells me you don't just wonder it. Mm, I think you've already confirmed it inside your own head. I... Uh... uh I wonder if my childish hostility towards Nissan has caused me to treat that child's life like a toy. Uh, what have I done? What have I... That isn't true. George is our wonderful son, and he'll always perform admirably wherever he goes. Eva, even if you let your own hopes get in the way a bit, in the way a bit, everything turned out okay in the end, hasn't it? You haven't done anything wrong. In fact, George is grateful for the strict discipline you gave him, right? Uh, uh, yes, kids and kids growing up love the strict discipline. Uh, every 100% of the time, if you ask, if you ask kids growing up, and even into their young adult ages, I'm sure if you ask them, they say, yes, I loved being raised in a very strict household with strict demands. Really? <laughs> Hey, really? George doesn't think I'm a terrible mother, does he? Does he? Does he? Does he? Oh, yeah. Hideyoshi's definitely pla like placating her to the best of his ability. He's, uh... Hideyoshi always strikes me as the... I was gonna say something about my parents. I, I can't. I can't shit talk my own parents. Uh, that would be bad. <laughs> I don't mean to. No, I'm not even. It wouldn't even make much sense. Uh, yeah, peacekeeper is a good word. He's very much the the cool head. Like, hey, even if you're freaking out right now, I'm going to say the things that are going to make you hopefully chill just a bit. He's never said anything like that, not even once. You're just worrying too much. Hideyoshi-sama. Everyone has left the boat. Oh, did you lose something? Do you need a hand? Kumasawa had come to check on them when they hadn't gone up to the deck. Hideyoshi hit Eva behind his back so that her expression wouldn't be seen. Uh, yeah, sorry. My necktie pin just got a bit crooked. We're fine, and we'll be out in a sec. Wait outside for us. 
そうですか。Is that so? <laughs> それでは、then, 表でお待ちいたしております。Then I will wait outside. Even though she didn't really understand, Kumasawa realized that something had come up and disappeared so that she didn't trouble them further. If they stayed here any longer, they'd probably make everyone else worry too. そろそろ行こうか。It's about time to go. ジョージたちを心配させてまうで。We'll make George and the rest worry. 私、本当にジョージに恨まれてない。George really doesn't despise me? ああ。Yeah. 恨まれてなんかあらへん。Nothing of the sort. むしろ感謝しとるぞ。In fact, he's very grateful. 悪い夢でむなされたんか。Did you have a nightmare? また。Again? <sighs> yes. Hideyoshi knew that Eva was often tormented by nightmares, and they always grew more marked, by,、uh, more marked on the days leading up to the family conference. Hideyoshi knew that Eva's relationship with Krauss was still full of antagonism to the point of being traumatic. And that she still couldn't let go of the feeling she had as a child. That was a dream. I'm with you now. If I grasp your hand like this, that dream will go away. Right? Look. I'm holding tight. Good guy Hideyoshi. Good guy Hideyoshi, who only really seemingly deserves the best. Until in episode 6, when it's revealed that Hideyoshi is a terrible person. I can't wait. Uh, giggle! That hurts. Thank you. I'm fine now. Let's get off the boat. Yeah. Let's get off the boat. Everyone's waiting for us. Um, I was about to say, let me make sure, look at the different characters before I say something I, I, I need to take back. I'm pretty sure it's pretty well documented at this point that anyone that's not actually like directly related to Kinzo, so not Kinzo by blood. Is probably pretty good. Like, is it generally is probably not a bad person. <laughs> so basically, that means like the wait staff and then these three. Yeah, Natsui had some problems, obviously. But like, you put Natsui next to these these four, then it's like, yeah, she's, she's, I, I think she, she clears them by a bit. Um, I'm sorry. Hmm? Hmm? I'm sorry. That I yelled at you. About the smoke from your cigarettes just now. Come on, you normally wouldn't apologize for that sort of thing. You're all frail after having that dream. Don't worry about it. Excuse me. Oh, I'm gross. Don't worry about it. I was wrong for not realizing the smoke was affecting you. Have you started to hate me? No way, no way. <laughs> If I hated you after something like that, we wouldn't have lasted three days. Come on, stand up, stand up. Let's get off the boat. Hideyoshi sama, Eva sama. God, everyone it just keeps popping their head in, checking in on them, because they're just not getting off the boat. They're like, get off the boat! 
Is everything all right? Are you not feeling well? This time it was Gota. It looked like they'd kept everyone waiting too long after all. Even Eva had to stand up, or stand up without grumbling now. She had to stop forcing her bad mood onto her husband and causing him any more trouble. Because that wasn't something a good wife would do. Is everything okay? If it's a matter concerning your health, shall I call Dr. Nanjo? Thanks. But I'm just feeling a little anemic. I'm fine now. It's a woman's disease. Don't worry about it. Think of the crust not so dynamic. Yeah. 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 Come to think of it, and then, like, if we talk about, obviously, Rosa, <laughs> we don't know who the, who the ex-husband might have been, or maybe not even husband, the father to Maria. Um, and then we don't, I mean, we've seen a little bit of these three, like, interacting, but not really, it, whenever, like, the three of them would be in, like, a scene together, a lot of the time it was, like, Rudolph and, uh, Battler, like, getting at each other, and then her just being, like, there, <laughs> so, like, I don't, unless I'm not, nothing's not coming directly to mind. But just as far as, like, their actual relationship, how good is it? <laughs> Come on. Don't say stuff like that in front of people. It's embarrassing. Oh, sorry, sorry. Eva elbowed Hideyoshi in the gut. By that time, her normal expression had returned, which allowed Hideyoshi to relax a little. The bright sunlight outside almost made her dizzy. A small plank for getting off the boat was lowered, and Goto was waiting there, smiling and ready to lend them a hand. Please, Eva-sama. Your hand. Well, the thing is, I would say it's at least in, like, the timeline we see. But we're tipped off to the fact that maybe Eva rushed into the relationship and had a child, which is probably a sign of a non-healthy kind of, like, situation. And I think that I, I, I mostly, for some reason, I'm trying to just shit on Eva, apparently. But I think it's that's mostly in, like... Hideyoshi's favor like this screams of me like Hideyoshi does a lot of like the legwork in making this a good relationship whereas like Eva constantly is like thinking about how to like probably put on a you know was constantly thinking about how to raise George to overtake Jessica and how she could get back at the rest of the family and Hideyoshi's just like yep I'm here and I will support I will play support type situation. Basically, I want to give Hideyoshi all the flowers. <laughs> I don't trust Eva enough to to give her any kudos here. Uh, thank you. Welcome to Rokenjima. Welcome back. Wait, what is this? What is this Achivo I got? Who is that? What is that? What? Welcome back. What is what's happening? Why is it black? Huh? When she left the boat, it seemed to Eve as though she'd heard the voice of her young self. No, it hadn't seemed that way. Someone had told her welcome back. What the hell is happening after becoming a shameless adult. The voice of her young self was distant. This better not be something funky. What am I living for? What can I do to release myself from this obsession? Hideyoshi heard her talking to herself. 
and Hideyoshi held on tightly to Eva's shoulders. His firmness alone told her that there was no need to say any more. Maybe it was because the typhoon was getting closer. The lively cries of the seagulls, which usually greeted them when they arrived, couldn't be heard at all. Man, I'm saying it right now. Eva's, like, a parent, like so closely on the verge of like having a mental breakdown in this moment only reinforces my belief that like this is going to be an eva focused chapter i think this is i think eva makes it into she's going to play like the adult role uh at least that we've seen in like the pro past two episodes i believe so hard so hard Bring. Oh, look, chemtrails. Unreal clouds. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> the chemtrails explain all the weird things that are happening in this game. It's not witches, it's the government. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, what? You mean six years ago? I mean, I was still in elementary school back then, right? It's pretty unfair to expect me to remember everything, don't you think? True. Especially because we were so young, we've grown a lot in these six years. If I hadn't been introduced, I might not even have remembered you. So? Really? I figured he was Battler right away. And when he opened his mouth, I was sure. Oh. Oh. I just met him for the first time. Didn't know him six years ago. That's right. Maria-sama was only three years old then. Well, same goes for me. Not only knew Maria when she was three years old, and since she's grown so big, of course I wouldn't recognize her. After lunch, we had all gone out to the beach to walk around, talk, and take it easy. Our parents were apparently having a suspicious, complicated discussion, so we ended up leaving them behind. Well, just as I'd guessed from the start, conversation focused on me since I've been away for six years. Still, you've really gotten tall. I wouldn't call myself short, but your height really surprised me. That's right. I remember when that Battler Sama was like six years ago. I remember well what Battler Sama was like six years ago, but I was surprised even so. Yeah, seriously. I can hardly believe this is the same Battler we knew back then. I'm surprised how much everyone remembers about it. My memory's all hazy. Yeah, I'll bet. Looks like it's taking you a while to remember us. You know, that hurts a bit. Come on, this was like six years ago, right? I'm the one who has it bad being forced to remember. Are you saying that you can't remember well because it was six years ago? I can remember it as clearly as it happened yesterday, as if it happened yesterday. Well, your memory is great after all. Six years ago, Batora-kun was doing what he was doing, what he was 
You remember the kind of things Battler did and said back then pretty clearly, don't you? Come to think of it, that's right. Shannon's memory can be incredible when you least expect it. Uh, I'm horrible at remembering. I remember fun things, but can't remember boring things at all. Uh. We all laughed, saying that everyone was like that. Shannon. By the way, what was Battler like six years ago? Remember any interesting episodes? Let's see. I'm sure that he said something like this when he left. I don't like where this is going. I don't like how the music cut out. I don't like this like cliffhanger of a sentence being here. I am... I already, yep, I could feel this from a fucking mile away. Here we go. It's gonna play dopey music. It's gonna play something dopey. Battler? I'll be back. See you again. I'll surely come for you riding a white horse. Yeah. Stop it! So embarrassing! Sounds just like something you'd say. Yeah, I remember you always used to be full of the stupid lines, Battler. <laughs> really does sound like something Batherkun would have said back then. Uh, embarrassing? Is that embarrassing? Yeah. Horribly embarrassing. Maria, I'm sure that when you're in middle school, you'll want to say embarrassing stuff like that. When that happens, make sure you write it down and read it three times before saying it out loud. If you don't, you'll definitely regret it. Still, everyone has to pass through that pitiful period. That's right. That's how you learn your place, learn shame, and become an adult. That's right. Yeah, it's one of those bittersweet things everyone does in adolescence as they transition to becoming adults. A memory you just want to forget. <laughs> After all, this is all stuff I'd let slip out without thinking, so I didn't remember the words exactly. But now that those words were being recited to me, they were as embarrassing as all hell. I only recently came to understand this weakness, and was working hard to avoid such careless outbursts, but... I guess I was just born with the habit of speaking without thinking, and there's nothing I can do about it. Shannon, do you remember any other embarrassing stuff? <laughs> yes, well... Yes, well, I remember a few other things, but... Since it looks like the person in question wants to forget them, I think I'll refrain from saying any more. Good person, Shannon. 
to be brutally honest. I don't remember this at all. Please don't make me remember. Uh. <sighs> Shannon's bullying battler? Uh. You can't. You shouldn't bully people. <laughs> she isn't really bullying him. Let's leave it at that, okay? But Shannon, you have to tell me about it sometime Battler isn't around. It sounds pretty interesting. Yes, certainly. No, you can't, Shannon Chan. Screeching. For a while, George and Iki laughed at me as a warming up for when Shannon Chan would tell him about more of my embarrassing misspeaks. Dun 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 dun. George looked like he was flirting with Shannon, but he seemed somewhat open and frank about it. He was always that way with his cousins, but he usually took on a reserved gentlemanly attitude when he came in contact with the servants. When I thought about it, I got the feeling he was being a bit overly friendly, which seemed strange. Maria started scribbling in the sand with a stick, and George and Iki and Shannon Chan joined in. This left me and Jessica off to the side, so I asked her secretively. Yo, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> Is George and Iki, um, going out with Shannon Chan? Oh! What the? How'd you guess? <laughs> Battler, you've got a keener eye for people than I thought. <laughs> Huh? What? I was just kidding, but they're actually going out? Shh. Your voice is too loud. It looks like they're keeping a secret for now, okay? It'd be better if nobody found out about it, especially Aunt Eva. Uh, I see. Love with a servant, huh? Yeah, but since when? Ooh, I guess a lot can happen in six years. <sighs> but yeah, Aniki's an amazing person, and Shan Chan seems to be kind and brave. <sighs> so they might make a pretty good match. Actually, six years ago, I remember taking notice of her just a little bit. I see, she really fits well with George and Aniki. Nothing I can do about that. Is this like a tinge of regret from Battler? Being like, why wasn't it me? <laughs> Goodbye, my fleeting first love. Oh, <laughs> battler. Goodbye, my fleeting first love of six years ago. <laughs> Which means that the collection of embarrassing lines Shannon Chan had just held back on probably had something to do with that. Ah, uh, I can't take it. How long have they been going out? That depends on what you call going out, but I think it's been at least a year. But if you count the time they both had one sided feelings, it'd probably be several years. Before I realized it, the two of them had separated themselves from the group and were walking down the beach, talking about something. They looked calm, and rather than a light relationship between two lovers, it looked like a more serious one, as though they were already engaged. Six years ago, huh? 
That's a long time. What did those six years mean to me? I've just gotten taller. I've just gotten taller. It was just a waste of time. Six years I spent obstinately fighting with my dad. What about you, Battler? You got a girlfriend? <laughs> hmm, I wonder. There's a few girls that I have fun with. But there's no only one. I guess I'm just a kid. I think it's more fun to be uh to be noisy with a large group of people than being alone with one person. Uh, so you battler. But take your relationships with your female friends seriously. When girls get wrong impressions or form a group, it can be scary, you know? They might be having secret feuds over you behind your back, with people getting hurt or crying. I mean, Jessica, no offense, you might be right, but I don't think Battler cares. Uh, that's so weird. I think I remember getting the same bit of advice from one of the girls in my class just last week. <sighs> What's this all about? Why can't everyone just have fun together? Do people really want to couple up that much? It's probably because you've never found a partner like that, Paddler. Well, you might run into someone sooner or later. You just gotta wait patiently. What? It almost sounds like you've already found a partner like that. What about you? Have you gotten a boyfriend? Huh? Me? Yes! <laughs> uh, no, uh. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Come on. That reaction's so easy to understand. From the looks of it, there's some boy you're thinking about, but you haven't been able to confess to him yet. Something like that? No, um, that's not, um, uh... Shut up, who cares about that? Oh, Jessica so willing to dish it out and ask and so nonchalantly ask others and then the question gets uh reversed to her and she just gets so flustered oh battle is the same thing i just said uh basically uh if you're the one who brought up the subject why are you yelling at me now Women are creatures who always ask questions and yet almost never answer them. What cruel creatures, seriously. Well, um. I did try. To confess once. Well, um, struck out pretty badly. Did you get an I'm sorry? No, um. 
私がすごく一方的だったんで、面食らわれたというのかな。Well, uh, my feelings were seriously one sided and they didn't really know how to respond, I guess. そういう対象だとも思われてなかったという雰囲気。It was like they didn't view me that way at all. そりゃそうだろうよ。Well, I can understand that. お前の言葉遣いは男勝りだからな。You talk like a man after all. もうちょいおしとやかにしないと男心をくすぐらないぜ。If you don't act、uh, a bit more graceful, you won't be able to catch a boy's interest. いやいや、やっぱりその。Is it really? 私みたいな言葉遣いじゃ。Is the way I speak? 悪いかな。Really that bad? Hmm? まあその言葉遣いが全てじゃないだろうがお前みたいな普段の言葉遣いが悪いやつが Well, um, how you talk isn't everything, but when people like you, who usually have a rough style of speech, 急にまともな言葉で話すように努力し始めたらそのそういう気概みたいなもんでドキッときちまう男もいるかもな Suddenly start working hard to talk more normally. Well, there are guys out there whose heart will skip a beat when they see how determined you are. So, so no, Jessica, you're fine just the way you are.、Uh, is that really true? So I see.、Mm. Yeah. Jessica suddenly started talking more meekly, and then her face instantly went slightly red. She's just being devastated. She's just being bodied right now. I see. Even though her confession didn't go well, it looks like she still hasn't given up. But still, I get it. After seeing how close George and Iggy and Shan Shan have gotten, I also kind of want to find a girlfriend. Six years. Six years of puberty are pretty important, and they went by pretty fast. As the typhoon approached, the clouds grew steadily grayer, but even so, I had this really refreshing feeling. Maybe I'll try thinking more seriously about the opposite sex, more than just the size of their boobs. That's a good first step, Battler. It's a good first step. <laughs> By the way, it looks like George and Iki's going out with a servant. Don't tell me it's the same for you. Uh, what? <laughs> Whoa, 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 why do you think that? So, yeah, Barate and the Isaac star, Kanon Kun te Wakaiko. Come to think of it, that kid Kanon Kun who greeted us in the Rose Garden. Kuchibeta Dakarate, Jessica, Yatara to Kabate Tayona. You were covering for him pretty intensely, considering he was just a little awkward at talking. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're getting paranoid. Then tell me just one thing. Right now. Is the boy you're after within one kilometer of this spot? Oh, don't ask her to red text it. She's not going to be able to confirm it. She's not going to be able to confirm it, battler. Well, about that, um, I, I wonder. Kenny Kun was the only boy on this island now who could possibly become her boyfriend. So, judging by her reaction, I was right on. I didn't think of the Yushiromiya family as a noble family, but love with a servant. I wouldn't have dreamed that two pairs of Romeo and Juliet would be right next to me. Aunt Eva would probably become an obstacle to George and Egan Shan Chan's love. If Aunt Eva ever learned that Shan Chan was the partner of her only beloved son, she'd probably scream at her for trying to steal away her precious George. And the relationship between Jessica and Kanekun would probably be just as full of difficulties. And Natsui was also very strict about that kind of thing. After all, Jessica's husband would probably become the head of the Yoshiromiya family in the future. If that person had once been a servant working for the family, well, <laughs> things would get complicated. Ma, right. I apologize too. I gotta shed like a layer here. I'm、uh, uh, 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 taking off a thing. I'm taking off some clothing. 
Oh boy. Oh, static. Oh. Threw that over there. Fuck that. Okay. Ah, let me put my headphones back on. I had to narrate that as I was doing it. Something to note about the couples. Eva at least chose the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is these youths, the youths of this of the of the culture, them and their non-arranged relationships, them wanting to date servants, them thinking about people not for their social status or their class, but as people. What are the kids doing these days? Uh, well, love is different for every person. As long as you're with someone who's fun to be around, does anything else matter? When two people pair up, they don't need anyone's permission, as long as they accept each other. Worrying about what your parents or family will say means you've already lost. Don't forget that. You better not go out with someone with mixed feelings. I can't believe you're saying something so philosophical sounding when you haven't ever been in love. Don't treat love like a matter of profit and loss. It's about heart. That's all I have to say. Well then. See you again. No. Have a nice day. <laughs> see you again. Well then, see you again. Have a nice day. Wahahaha. <laughs> 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 ha ha. I think Battler I think Battler loves being corny. He loves it. George Nissan Shannon Shannon listen listen This guy he said another one of those lines. I didn't say anything, I didn't say anything. Ah, uh, don't make fun of me. Don't make fun of me. Uh, I heard it. See you again. See you again. See you again. See you again. For a while, I forgot that the wind was getting stronger and played around on the beach. I grew a lot these past six years. Being able to celebrate my youth and meet with all my cousins was truly refreshing. It was a bit late now, but I realized that I should have gotten back together with everyone a lot sooner. And returned the Ishromia family. I feel like I've asked this question before. And I feel like if it had if if the answer is one way, then I feel like answering it fully might be somehow be a spoiler. But have have we have we been told why Battler missed the family conference for six years? Because that's obviously something that's being brought up. It's been brought up now multiple times throughout each of these episodes or whatever. Okay. I, I, cause I don't remember it exactly, but I feel like it's either I don't remember it or if it was brought up, it was briefly and it wasn't really like explained much. And then if that's the case, maybe there's obviously something more about it that might be important later on, or it might not be important at all. Just a fight with his father was explained. Okay. I will accept that. Well then I'm in the camp thinking that Whatever that fight was, that was big enough to essentially make Battler. I assume not even either Battler not wanting to show up for six years, or uh, Rudolph being like, "You're not going with the fam. You're not meeting with the family for six years." Uh, either one of those sides. Uh, it was probably a big fight. I'm gonna guess. Uh. 
Yeah, okay, so I vaguely remember that. I vaguely remember. I feel like I vaguely remember it being like, yeah, I was pitched as like... Bad or being so pissed where you're just like, well... I mean, even just this line right here being like, but I realized that I should have gotten back together with everyone a lot sooner. Even that line makes it sound like it was... It was under his control. Um... It sure is nice to have all the cousins together every once in a while. Uh, I like it too. It's really fun when all the cousins get together. That's right. We're already old enough. Uh, it's not like we sh uh, we couldn't meet each other when our parents aren't around. It might not be a bad idea to gather the cousins together and play every once in a while. Oh, someone's trying to message me. Let me... Beep bop. What is this? Who is it? Who is... Hmm? Hmm? Uh oh. Uh, that's a good plan. Maybe we should set up something like that the next time we get a chance. Yeah, I agree. I hope we cousins can stay friends forever. Hey, hey, if you make such a big deal of it, you almost make it sound like relatives usually end up hating each other. <laughs> George and Iki and Jessica laughed, but it felt just a little strained. Did I say something wrong? Judging by our parents made quiet expressions and tired faces every once in a while during the boat ride and at the airport, maybe I should have kept that to myself. <laughs> You're right. It's just like Jessica said. Let's always be friends to each other. Uh, me too. We're all friends. That's right. Yeah. We'll always be together. We'll always be friends. <laughs> Alright, let me see this. Badlor had been lying living, it says, with his grandparents on his late mother's side for the past six years and harbors resentment towards his father, Rudolph, for betraying his mother. Okay. I've I, now that 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 definitely like rejogs my memory on that whole thing. Um, yeah, I remember those lines too. Okay, that makes sense. I uh, just got hey hey. Man, we've been saying some pretty embarrassing stuff. I feel kind of awkward. But I think it's very important. People are creatures who find it very hard to stay together, much less remain friends unless they truly desire it. That's right. Really can't take everyone for being uh, everyone being friendly for granted. Uh, a witch I know said it. Happiness won't be granted unless everyone believes in it. That's true. Maybe some magic exists in the power of belief. If we all believe in that, I'm sure it'll bring us happiness. Also, George just glossing over the fact that she brought up the witch, maybe, a bit yes. there. Uh, all right. Like, if my extremely young cousin for the first time, or possibly, maybe it's not the first time. Maybe I'm being dramatic. I'm just saying if I was hanging out with some cousins and like my little, my super young cousin was like, yeah, a witch one time told me that, uh, you know, happiness is great, or whatever she said. 
I be like, excuse me? Uh, I beg your pardon? Well, if we're doing embarrassing stuff already... Let's all swear to believe in this together, okay? That will all always be friendly. That will always be happy. Like hell we'd end up like our parents. As if we'd ever search for each other's weaknesses, going after grandfather's fortune. Okay. We'll always be friendly and happy. Let's all believe in that. No matter how much we cousins try to nostalgically have fun, dark clouds continue to approach Rokinjima. Wonder if the typhoon will pass and let us see the clear skies before we leave this island. <laughs> uh, no. Who cares about what our parents are planning? Who cares about the inheritance and the honor of our old family? As youthful as we were, we were renewing our old friendship. And we all believed together that we could find happiness. That's why... I want this pair of days to end... Without anything weird happening. Oh, come the fuck on. Come the fuck on. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Uh, in peace and happiness. And calmly. Is there another line coming? Oh. No, I don't just want them to end. Please, let them end. Oh my god, what the hell? Uh, let them end? What a gag. What a gag. Oh shit, we're already going. Alright, damn it. Don't show up, don't appear. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Sorry to keep you waiting. I finally prepared a new game. Come, let us begin this tale of tragedy. Come to me, winds, rain, typhoon! Cut this island off from the real world. Throw Broken Jima into another realm, into the spirit world, into a world of fantasy. Whoa, oh shit. And so, the tale repeated for the third time. However, to an endless witch, what did it matter whether it was the first, second, or third time? Probably didn't matter at all. After all, this was a tale of fantasy, endlessly repeating until the match had started, or was started. Would Battler surrender first, or would the witch? Man, are we really just going right into it? Are we just... Eliminate the pomp and circumstance, just get in there. Go, chess pieces, go! Then the sky grew dark and cloudy, and the rain and wind were summoned together and became a typhoon. Maria could be seen in the rose garden, paying no mind to the rain that had started falling, going around in a circle, searching for that single rose that should have been marked. No. Not here. No. Not here. No. My rose no. that we marked isn't here. Uh, uh. Maria definitely remembered it. That rose had been in the flower bed right here. And yet, it wasn't anymore. She didn't know what to do with her irritation at not being able to find something that should have been there. And, moaning bitterly, she couldn't help but keep going back and forth in circles around the same spot. She was acting almost as though she'd been able she'd be able to see it if she looked at a different angle. But even though she did that, there was no way to find something that wasn't there. The wind grew increasingly strong, and the rain turned into cold, large drops. There was no way even Maria would fail to notice this. However, if she couldn't find her rose here, it would surely disappear forever. Maria believed that. That feeling spurred her on to keep searching for a rose that she had no chance of finding. Just then, 
cold drops of rain tormenting Maria were suddenly blocked. An umbrella? Uh. Ooh. Maria raised her head. When she did, she saw an umbrella there. I knew it. Protecting her from the rain. And the one holding out that umbrella was... Uh. The witch she admired, Beatrice. Beatrice! What are you doing so frantically in the middle of all this rain? You could catch a cold like this. Even witches have to care for their own health. I... I can't find my rose. Oh. No matter how many times I search, even though it should have been here, I can't find it. Maria told Beatrice about how there had been a slightly unhealthy, pitiful rose, and that she was sure they had marked it. Oh, oh. So you can't find it. If you're a witch's apprentice, you should use magic to search for the rose. I believe that searching with just your eyes won't be nearly enough. Oh. Uh. I can't find it. I did my best and tried to search with magic, but I can't find it. I think practicing your magic is a very good thing, but it might be a little too much for you with all this wind and rain. Allow me to lend you some special power. Concern for one's disciples is also one of a teacher's duties. Thank you, Beatrice. Maria's face, which had been full of sadness until just now, split open into a grin. Maria knew. She knew that there was nothing Beatrice's magic couldn't do. So she was sure that Beatrice would be able to find the rose easily, even though Maria couldn't. Beatrice closed her eyes lightly, acting as though she was listening for something in all this wind and rain. Then she heard it, opened her eyes, and spoke. Hmm. All things in this world are transitory. Too bad, Maria. It seems your rose couldn't withstand all this wind and rain. Oh. Oh. Then my rose... It was uprooted by the wind and is no longer of this world. Oh. Uh. What Beatrice had said was quite reasonable. There was nothing odd about the flower being broken off of the stem in the strong wind. However, Maria couldn't accept this and bitterly gave a low-pitched moan. Yada. No. Huh? Yada, yada, yada. No, no, no! <laughs> it's my rose! <laughs> my rose won't come back! No! I'll bring it back to life with my magic. Beatrice, teach me how to revive a rose with magic. <laughs> huh. It's much too early for an apprentice like you to learn the hidden art of endless magic. Know your place. <laughs> <laughs> Maria wiped the tears from her eyes full of regret. Beatrice shrugged her shoulders and chuckled at Maria's pitiful expression.
Very well. I will lend you my power, the hidden art that can revive a rose. Really? Indeed. Well then, concentrate the power of your heart. Close your eyes. Forget the rain, forget the wind, and search for the soul of the wandering rose with the eyes of your heart. Oh. Maria closed her eyes. Then, she repeated Beatrice's song-like words. Come, try to remember. Rose, what form did you have? Come, try to remember. Rose, what form did you have? Don't look. Don't listen. And believe. Release the power of your soul from the cage of flesh that imprisons it. That's it? Good. Around Maria, who was concentrating her power, her eyes tightly shut, small golden butterflies began to dance. Was this the manifestation of the magical power Maria held? Lost soul of the rose. Gather into one, and remember your form. Come, gather, remember. The glitter of the gold butterflies began to strengthen and their numbers increased. Then, Beatrice raised a finger up to the skies, and they began to gather at the tip of that finger. This was the miracle of the golden magic. The gold butterflies began to condense into a single da dazzling grain of gold. It was a single glittering gold seed. It rode on the tip of Beatrice's finger, budded into a golden sprout, and opened into a golden leaf. It then slowly fell from that fingertip, sank into the mud of the flower bed, and began to grow steadily. Maria, who admired magic and the witch, really wanted to see this fantastical sight. However, as an apprentice, Maria was still not qualified to see it. No, she was probably afraid that if she opened her eyes to look, the power that she had concentrated in her heart would be cut off, and the magic would be lost. Therefore, Beatrice is the only one permitted to witness this golden miracle, was the only witch, the sole master of many miracles. Then, the fully grown rose bloomed, creating one golden flower. And when Beatrice poked it with her finger in just the right way, the gold-colored sparkle scattered, just as if a golden soap bubble had popped, and what remained was a single beautiful rose. Hmm. It looks like you've remembered a splendid rose. However, if we just leave it mixed in with these other roses, you won't be able to tell it apart. Shall I perform one last service? Beatrice, for the sake of her cute apprentice, who is moaning even more now in concentration, Decide to use one more bit of magic. When she snapped her fingers, a single gold butterfly appeared, fluttered around, and landed on the flower that had just been revived. Then it suddenly burst open and disappeared, becoming gold lace and marking the rose. That'll do. Maria. Maria. You may open your eyes now. Huh? Where's the rose? No. It's not here. No. Not here. So, See, I... This... 
ah, this moment, like, old me, me of like 20 parts ago maybe, would be like, oh, look at this nice moment, Beatrice, she is, she has a heart, she actually cares, she's just trying to have a nice moment to Maria, she probably knows Maria is a, is a, a fragile, uh, little girl with a, a mom that kind of hates her and kind of sucks, but like, we know, we know Beatrice just does this and acts nice to certain people to then betray or influence. Like in Be in uh, Maria's case, I think just completely manipulate Maria to essentially have an impressionable person on her side. Like, so it's just like, ah, uh, Beatrice. I'm not falling for it. I'm not thinking you're nice. <laughs> you're doing parlor tricks here just to manipulate Maria. And I will not have any of it. Not over there. Over here. Look. I've marked it with golden lace. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, Beato. Thank you, Beato. I want to become a witch quickly. A great witch like you. And you can. Long ago, I too wished for that innocently, just as you do. I have attained that level. Maria was ecstatic over the revived rose, clapping her hands and jumping around in joy. Watching that, Beatrice also smiled, looking fairly pleased. Also, I just had a, an intrusive thought right now. So, at the beginning of this episode, we saw the whole, like, young Beatrice. We assume young Beatrice. And then the the other Beatrice, the other haired Beatrice, the other person who was calling herself Beatrice. And that was like a witch with great power. And then as far as we understand, young Beatrice being like, oh, I want to become a witch too. What if, the, if, what if this is gearing up to be, I don't know if it'll happen in this episode. Maybe it'll happen in the answers arc, but like, what if this game does something really crazy? As if, I'm going to say something that's not that crazy, but what if this game does something massively crazy? And we either do a big time skip, or something, something happens to this Beatrice. To the point where, then the name, because I said it before in the other thing where, wait, did the name Beatrice, like, pass on to this person? Is, is, is it just a line, a long line of Beatrices in the history of this game's universe? And then if that's the case, is is this Beatrice, golden-haired Beatrice, prepping this Maria to then be the next successor of Beatrice, of the Beatrice name and powers? And then are we going to see Maria somehow become the antagonist, the full-blown antagonist? Again, time skip or no, and we're just, it's Maria versus, like, Battler for some reason. That would be fucking weird. I'm, pla I'm planting my flag. I've talked myself into it. I've talked myself into it. I'm convinced. I'm 100% convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm convinced. By now, I can break and repair any soul if I try. Not just that of a rose, and kill and revive as I pleased. Come. The barrier of the storm has now sealed Rokinjim off from the natural world. Now is the time for the Golden Witch, Beatrice, to descend as an endless witch. Beatrice pulled from her pocket an envelope with the family crest, the one-winged eagle, and gave it to Maria. Maria frolicked around at being selected to be the witch's messenger. So, Kinzo. I've come to join in on your fun once more. My preparations are already complete. What of you? Have you prepared enough coins to bet in tonight's game? Bum, bum, bum. 
無論準備は十分であるぞベアトリーチ Of course I'm fully prepared ビアトリス駒はふんだんに用意したぞ I've assembled a plethora of pieces その絵も心構えも十分だ I'm ready both physically and mentally さあアンティを支払おうではないか So then Let us make the ante. So not to any Sazukerari, Saigoni was so not any Sibete Kaisubeki Monoda. All that you have given should be returned to you in the end. So, Ukitori! Come, take it! Kenzo flung the window of his study open wide, took off the valuable golden ring that had been on his finger, and threw it into the darkness of the raging wind and rain. The ring was struck by lightning, and after twinkling gold for an instant, Disappeared. Kinza watched it go, grinning broadly and fearlessly. I don't think I'll lose. You are mine. Forever. Forever. The ring that Kinzo had thrown became a single gold butterfly and fluttered around in the wind and rain. It headed for the rose garden, almost as though it was being guided there. It then found the figure of the golden witch and fluttered down. When it came down right in front of Beatrice, it burst open and returned to its original form, flying through the air. The way it was going, you would have expected it to fall into a puddle, but it stopped suddenly in midair. Almost as if some transparent person had caught it. Apparently, even Beatrice hadn't expected this. However, she realized what, no, who it was, and grinned broadly at it. Who? The fuck is this man? <laughs> yeah. As she did, the shadow of the person who had caught the ring began to fuzzily appear. It was the figure of a young man wearing a butler's uniform embroidered with the one winged eagle crest. There was no man like this among the servants of the Ishermia family. Even so, Beatrice laughed as though it was someone she was remembered fondly. Renove? Renove? Or Renove? Renove. I like Renove. It sounds more fancy. Renove, is it? It's been quite some time. It seems you have remembered me. You're always a man who took loyalty seriously. It has been quite some time since your last correspondence. Not for a single day have I, Renove, forgotten that I serve you, my lady. Now, I think I like Renove sounding better than Renove, but uh, every time I say it, I sound like a f I, to me, myself personally, I feel like a tool saying it, so I guess I'll just have to get over that. I was more afraid that you had forgotten about me. After all, you can be quite forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's interesting. Because, uh, well, not, you know, I mean, not interesting. That's not how it started. But, like, it only makes sense if, if Kinzo is allowed to have a, 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 a weight staff. A butler force that he may or may not have constructed by his own hand somehow using some form of magic it only makes sense that the other master of the of the mansion Beatrice also has uh, a, 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 I mean technically she has all those those goat-headed butlers she has those stakes the the uh, the the anime babes Uh, but, uh, I mean, she needs, she needs, like, a, she needs an official butler force. And uh, this guy, uh, looks, looks like he's ready to play that role so hard and commit to it. 
I see. Yes, I certainly am forgetful. I'd forgotten even your sarcasm until I heard it again. Lady, take this. With an exaggerated yet elegant gesture, he bowed respectfully. Oh my god, he seems like he's very extra. And I am all for it. He's probably so dramatic, and I love it. And held out to Beatrice the head's ring that he just caught. It is the Ishiromiya family head's ring returned to you from Ishiromiya Kinzo. It is now once again in possession of its master. Indeed. This is Kinzo announcing the start of the game. Of course I'll accept it. So, how shall we play tonight? Shall I prepare the roulette immediately? Or shall I prepare some black tea first? I can't decide which, but first, I need you to greet someone. I'm sure that guy's got his mouth hanging open and can't shut it. Right, battler? Oh my god, he's jumping! Renove went from in-universe Renove to meta Renove. He's got some magic powers. Oh shit. Greetings. Allow me to introduce myself. There it is. I, I am called Renove, and I serve at the side of Milady Beatrice. Let's go, let's go. Oh, it's there, it's there. Okay, so let me just make sure. Okay. Whoa. Okay, one of the 72 great demons. Oh, there's 72, okay. Works for a master in exchange for various forms of compensation. Currently has a contract with Beatrice as her butler, head furniture. He's become proficient at housekeeping after serving in many households, so his ability as a butler is very high. In the high society of witches, employing him has become a kind of status symbol. Furthermore, the cookies he bakes are superb, and witches will often form a line demanding them. He must possess tremendous magical power, but since he always stays out in the spotlight to further boosts his master's reputation, his combat cap capabilities are unknown. Uh, not immediately familiar, though it sounds familiar, but not, but not strongly. that effect okay get out of here screen it is truly a pleasure to meet you see his mouth's hanging open and he can't shut it right <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Another incomprehensible guy just showed up. Uh, first, I grumble about goat-headed people doing the bond dance, and then goat heads start showing up in swarms. <laughs> and since then, not only have those seven ass Nissans appeared, but now there's even a butler? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Cut it out! Me and Battler are the same right now. Uh, by the way, Battler, did you notice? Did you realize that me eating him is a true devil's proof? Uh, devil's proof? What do you mean? Uh, 
He may not look like it, but this guy's one of the 72. A genuine demon. In other words, I've brought a demon right in front of you, which truly proves that they exist. <laughs> Renove holds a noble rank in hell, the 27th highest rank great demon. He's a pretty useful man. I summoned him at high cost and made him serve me. It is an honor to meet you. While my name is amongst those of the nobles of hell, I now serve as the head furniture of Beatrice Sama, who, despite being a vulgar human, is a great witch of such caliber that demons flee before her. <laughs> Cackle, 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 cackle. He's a very useful man, but he's impudent with his words. Frustratingly enough, he sometimes forgets to respect his master. Nothing in my contract specifies the manner in which I am to speak. Would you like to change that contract? It keeps me entertained, so it's fine. <laughs> Beatrice turned her back to him, cackling. After bowing once to her back, Renove turned back to Badler and stuck out his right hand, showing off an innocent smile. Normally, this would mean that he was asking for a handshake. What is this supposed to be? I am another who has been subjected to my lady's whims. In that sense, I'm sure we could become good friends. This is a handshake of friendship. Of course. It's in no way implies your entry into a contract with a demon, so fear not. Sorry, but I'm right in the middle of a big fight with your master. I only shake hands with an enemy after we've beaten each other up in a rainy schoolyard and all worn out, like something you'd see in a teen drama. Good line. Remember that. Oh, is that foreshadowing? Are we foreshadowing a fight between these two? And then at the end they're gonna shake? Can't wait. Can't wait. I see. To shake hands with you, Battler Sama, I must create a fitting atmosphere in a suitable location. Exchanging sweet words and physical language with you that rings true to your heart. Uh, when the opportunity arrives, I shall arrange for such an encounter. I must say, I simply love situations like that myself. <laughs> As Renove laughed tauntingly, he whispered to Battler, bringing his face so close that their noses were almost touching. Battler, his face turning red after getting so close to another of the same sex, pushed him away. You're a creepy bastard. I see. It's right for Beato's butler. 
It is an honor to receive such words of praise. I'm very confident in my tea brewing abilities, so please look forward to tea time. Baking cookies is one of my hobbies, so please feel free to request any snacks you may desire. God, I would want to taste those cookies so bad. I want to taste Renove's cookies so bad. Just what I would expect from a pair of the same gender. You start getting along well right off the bat. I'm jealous. My, my. I, if I had a good, like, Maximilian Pegasus from the Yu Gi Oh! series voice, I would love to give Renove that kind of voice. I just. I, one, don't want to do too strong of voices in this, uh in the series, but also uh, I, I'm not confident enough. But that's the that's the impression I get from him uh, quite a bit. Uh, I apologize for making you jealous, milady. Yeah, I know. Like, after reading just a few lines from him, I'm already like, oh yeah, he has that kind of aura about him. Uh, I shall not sneakily snatch your guest away from you. Well then, I will leave for now to retake my post as head furniture and greet my subordinates. Please, forgive my short absence. Indeed. Only the common goats and the seven sisters used for the ceremony have manifested themselves. You will be able to uh, finish greeting them in no time. Oh? Those lively seven sisters are here? I wonder if those naughty girls have grown a little more graceful. <laughs> <laughs> If that's graceful, I'll have to doubt the definition of the word graceful. Is that so? Then I suppose you've already had the opportunity to play with those sisters. Judging by your expression, it would seem they're just as naughty as always. Even though I'm always telling them to act more fitting as servants of Beatrice-sama. What troublesome kids. If that's your problem, don't worry. They actually act perfectly fitting for their master. <laughs> uh, cackle, cackle, cackle. Now even you have begun to say it. However, a conversation means that you accept your partner. The fact that you started to respond to my idle chatting proves that you are gradually starting to accept my existence. That's, That's because, even if the sun starts rising from the west, I will definitely, absolutely never accept that you're a witch. You might want to try a more positive approach, like crying and kissing my shoes. Oh yeah, spin it on her. Even if Battler was bluffing, he still spoke forcefully, a fearless expression on his face. The witch and her butler snickered together, realizing that their guest had regained more than enough of his willpower to attend to a new game, and that preparations were complete. After Renova exchanged a few words with Beatrice, he bowed silently to Battler, scattered into several golden butterflies, and disappeared.
cackle, cackle. It is truly pleasing to have such a boisterous atmosphere. <laughs> How boring were the days when I was trapped alone on this island, unable to regain my power and lacking anyone to talk to. I get how that unpleasant guy is really fitting as your butler. But tell me, why has that butler only appeared now? You said something about how only the goats and the Nichons of the Seven Stakes had manifested themselves. What did that mean? Indeed. You still resist, but I'm a fully fledged witch. I am in contact with several non human entities in the spirit world. I'll bet. No sane people would hang, uh, would hang out with you. Got her. First some goat monsters, then those ass Nichans, and this time a demon butler showed up. I hate to think about it, but the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if even more weird people appeared. <laughs> Among the furniture that work in my great golden mansion, how many demons do you think want to come over and play? They will keep coming. Many of them will appear. When the door to the Golden Land is opened, I will call back all of my furniture and build my new castle here on Rokinshima. Then I plan to invite all of my old friends and we will drink and dance together for three days and three nights. Of course, I also plan to invite Kinzo's family, you see. You too, if you wish. <laughs> so is this what you mean? That since you lost your power for a long time, you couldn't summon them? And then, since your magic power has been gradually increasing, uh, you've been able to summon more and more monsters? It is as you say. You stopped a hair's breadth before crumbling. But your heart is already wavering, and you are unable to deny, to deny that I am a witch. That wavering in your heart has been slowly restoring my power as a witch. So, are you trying to say that creepy butler appeared? Because I started to surrender? That's right. Bit by <laughs> bit, by bit you're surrendering to me. Isn't all that humiliation you suffered in the last game a result of you submitting to me so deeply? Wasn't it great when you had to sacrifice your back for the sake of my feet? 
I'm so funny. Damn it. Whatever. I thought I'd be able to keep things as they were, as long as I didn't accept you. I thought I'd be able to keep things as they were, as long as I didn't accept you. But it looks like that was wrong. So. Correct. Yeah. 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 Isn't chess the same? In the process of cornering each other's kings, we trade several pieces. Of course, I still haven't cornered your king. And furthermore, you're giving it everything you've got just to help your king escape and have lost several pieces to me, as well as a large advantage. It is only natural that further developments will tend to turn in my favor. <laughs> Forgot how to read for a second there. <laughs> Damn. From now on, you'll probably be frantic as you try to avoid my checkmate. However, as you do, I will steal your pieces from you one by one. In the end, you'll have lost everything but your king, and you won't be able to escape no matter how much you try. And you'll receive a true checkmate. You were talking big last time, weren't you? Something about how you'd never accept me and would torment me with eternal torture. Only witches who have reached the endless level can talk about eternity. That's been beyond you ever since the very beginning. Cackle, 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 cackle. Ha 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 Maria. Kinzo-sama has already publicly displayed the location of the hidden gold within the epitaph under my portrait. The rules apply equally to all who can read the epitaph. If you discover the gold, I shall return everything to you. Tonight, I ask that you enjoy your battle of wits with Kinzo-sama to the fullest. I sincerely pray that this night will be both intellectual and elegant. Beatrice the Golden. When Maria finished reading the letter that Beatrice had handed her, everyone was at a loss for words for a while. Okay, I was literally just about to say, hey, did she, like, is she just reading it by herself now for some reason this time? No, she's, it's just, we're just getting in this. And then, they all broke the silence at once. Uh, ridiculous. What a worthless, vicious prank. Seriously. 
There's no way. There's no way Father gave up the head's ring. Beatrice? Beatrice? Huh. What a transparent prank, hoping to confuse us just by bringing up that name. Hey, hey, who filled this dessert up with a little too much punch? I want to applaud and praise you, so come clean, okay? Rosa? Uh, of course not. I want to pull a prank by assuming father's name. Then Aneki? Aniki? Me? Are you an idiot? It was Nissan, right? Only he could plan something this vulgar. Are you trying to mock me? I'm the one who wants to question you. Also, it, it seems maybe I'm jumping the gu uh, jumping the gun here. It seems I might be getting what I want. An episode focused on that riddle. Uh, we're we're just we're just gonna solve the riddle, guys. This is, I swear the riddle is gonna be a thing in this episode. It's gonna be important. <laughs> uh, who is behind this ill-natured prank? Krauss beat the table and stared at everyone. Since I included the children too, he scared most of them. A letter from a mysterious person who claims to have been given full rights to father's assets. Considering that the whole point of this family conference is a discussion of that subject. I think it's too hasty to call this a mere prank. We can't be sure. Maybe it really is one of Father's shady pranks. He might have planned this to shock us a bit, since we've been discussing the distribution of his inheritance with Adam. If Dad was the one who planned this... Then we can't take what Maria Chen just read aloud as a joke, right? That's right. If you interpret the contents literally, then this is a test from Father. The epitaph of the witch has been displayed in the hall for quite some time now. So that any of us could solve it. There was plenty of notice. That means he was saying he was saying that for the first person to solve it would be. That means he was saying that the first person to solve it would be handed the inheritance along with all of his wealth, right? See? My magic granted your wish. Oh, that was young Eva. I understand. I'm here. I'm I'm present. I understand. Nothing so foolish could possibly be the case. It is an unshakable fact that my husband is a successor to the Ishiromiya family headship. Well, doesn't this letter shake that? This is a message from the person who has given full rights to all of father's wealth. Nissan's right to become the head has returned to a blank state. The person who solves the riddle. The person who finds Beatrice's gold will become the next head of the Ishiromiya family. Ridiculous. Do you think we can trust the meaningless words in that letter? That the seal was the real thing? 
There's no way we could trust that. Then let's try to go and ask father directly. At this point, you can't get away with saying he's grumpy or feeling bad, right? This the old wax clearly shows that this was from father's representative. If you doubt that, then show some proof, Nissan. Show that this letter does not contain father's will. Very well. It is just as you say. It no longer matters whether father's in a good mood or not. Let us go up and ask him directly. Let's do it. We'll ask Dad directly. Dad is Dad, so why would he act in such a roundabout way? Then again, I guess I would be like him. I wonder if we really should continue this discussion on the assumption that this letter came from father. Rosa! Stupid Rosa! Damn. Yeah, Eva is convinced. She, she's like, no, I'm not going to let anyone squander my chance here. Uh, isn't it obviously from father? That letter is father's. Isn't it obvious that he's giving the four of us an even chance to become the successor? Jesus, die, you brainless idiot! Rosa really is dumb. If only she'd just give up and die. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's right. I'm sorry. In the beginning, the adults had all doubted the credibility of the letter, but after realizing that this was a once-in-a-lifetime chance and the inherited struggle for the three younger siblings, Eva changed her position, claiming that the letter was authentic. Rudolph and Rosa caught on and agreed. Outrageous! How can adults like you take such a worthless prank this seriously? I don't need to be father to understand his contempt. Mama, 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 mama. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Not sui san. All we've got to do is ask father and we're done, right? Won't everything be uh, fine if capital F father just tells us that he doesn't know about any letter? Nisan. Nisan. Take responsibility and just get him to say that he doesn't know about the letter. This is no time to get scared just because he's in a bad mood, okay? He's still scared of father at this, his a uh, at his age? That idiot. If only he'd just give up and die. Oh. Yeah. Let's get this settled clearly. He's probably eating in his study right now. Let's have him set down his chopsticks for just a moment. It's decided. Let's go. Kyrie, wait here for a while. Uh, we'll go to check whether it's true or not and come back quickly. Thank you. I'll wait patiently for Goda-san to bring in dessert. The four siblings, Natsui and Hideyoshi, all rose from their seats forcefully and flew out into the hallway with a clatter. 
Afterwards, only the children, stunned completely speechless. Nanjo, who looked uncomfortable, <laughs> uh, Nanjo, and Kairi, who was just shrugged, were left. Oh, man, I was hoping for a scene, like a big scene transition. All right, well, fuck, I apologize, but I'm actually, I'm being summoned uh, away from the stream. Yeah, Nanjo, honestly, I always feel bad for Nanjo. He's just always stuck. Stuck. Um, I am being summoned. I have to go do some things. I'm being called. Actually, let me just make sure. Uh, let me, let me, I'll, let me message. I'll, I'll go one more. I'll message the person. I'll see if I get a response. Hold. Hold. Okay. No, I think I gotta go. <laughs> Uh, but thanks so much for the stream. Uh, I was kind of, I already saved. I was really just hoping that, that we did like a big, uh, you know, mirror shatter. Uh, no streams tomorrow. I'll be out and about pretty much all tomorrow. Uh, should be back tomorrow or tomorrow, Sunday night. Probably for some Zanky Zero. Uh, and I will say now, expect probably a lot of Zanky Zero throughout next week. As I, uh, I'm going to make a big push for that probably throughout the week. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. You have a nice night as well. See you in another stream, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Uh, until, until next time.